Tonight we're coming back to Joshua chapter 14 and uh, of course in chapter 13 we saw this morning as we looked at the closing uh, portion of that and we kind of did a little overview of chapter 13 and we saw the announcement to this aged leader uh, as God began to speak to Joshua and of course encouraging him to continue on doing what he was doing and not to give up the fight, the assessment of the land and then the assurance of the help of the Lord and then, of course, the agreement of the land, how that they distributed to the, the land to each tribe, the various tribes that God had told them to do. And I, if you remember in the closing part of that chapter, we said that uh, the tribe of Levi was the tribe that uh, didn't get any possession as far as land was concerned. Uh, for the Lord told them, said, I'm your inheritance. I am your inheritance. I'm glad we got Jesus with us. Aren't you glad of that tonight? And I say to you as the children of God, Say, folks, if you're saved tonight, God's with you. You say, Preacher, I don't, I don't feel him. I don't feel him around me. He's still with you. Don't, don't you worry about that. If you're saved, he's not only with you, he's in you. And I'm thankful for that from the promises of God's holy word. We began chapter 14 this morning as we looked at the character of Caleb. Caleb comes on the scene. He approaches Joshua. And uh, as our text uh, verse in verse 12, where he said, I want you to give me that mountain. Now, give me this mountain. Uh, he uh, wanted that mountain, and of course he reminded Joshua of how good God had been to them, and he made that declaration himself. And he said, as far as my character is concerned, I, I've got a tried character, a trusted character, and a triumphant and truthful character. He was faithful in service, he was fervent in spirit, and he was favored for his service by the Lord. And we'll see that in the closing of this message tonight. And to kind of open up and pick up where we left off this morning, we're moving into the commitment of Caleb, his commitment unto the Lord. We gave you this morning about verses 8 and those other verses, verse 9, verse 14 that we gave you, where it said he wholly followed the Lord in his life. I want to tell you what, what a testimony. If you come down to die and the, the preachers are able to stand over your body and say they wholly followed the Lord, what a testimony. That we could wholly follow Jesus and know that uh, that was our testimony of life. That we didn't waver, uh, as the old preachers used to say, it, we didn't wobble on the axle, but yet we stayed true to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a testimony. And this man had not only uh, a living testimony, when he came down to die, he had a dying testimony, uh, for he served the Lord. And uh, this man, Caleb, as we mentioned this morning, just in touching briefly that he was a man that had given everything that he was. <clears throat> he gave everything that he was, everything that he had, uh, everything that he would be to the Lord in that he followed the Lord. Now let me, let me begin this uh, part of the message tonight by saying this. There's a lot of folks who said, well, preacher, and I wish I had tied this in this morning uh, before we let the crowd go this morning, but I, I look o over this congregation and there may be some say, well, preacher, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. And uh, I, surely God doesn't expect me uh, to live that type of a life where I would wholly follow the Lord like Caleb did. Surely, surely, uh, you know, I'm just a regular old church member, and God doesn't expect uh, all of that of me in my life. Well, let me say this to you. You're 100% wrong. For God does expect it. God deserves, but uh, He also desires, and He deserves, and He demands that from all of us that we give everything we have to Jesus Christ. As I preached that message last week, uh, on Christ is all I need. He's my, uh, he's my everything, and He is all I need. Uh, Christ, was, Christ was my life. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, he's my mind, uh, he's my goal, he's my strength, he's my power. He's everything that I ever need. And what a disgrace it would be for the child of God not to give everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. As children of God, we ought to give everything. As I said, uh, we, uh, we would be failing him and falling short of that. And one preacher even termed it like this. He said, if we don't follow the Lord wholly in our life, we're disgraced to the name and the title of Christian. Strong words, but true. God has given us everything. Why should we not uh, give him everything and not, uh, not be that? I don't want to be a half-hearted Christian. I don't want to be a half-hearted Christian. 
Uh, I, I, you know, in that, in that aspect, if we just give uh, half of our effort, friend, man, if, you know, that's just 50%. I want to give 100% to Jesus. Amen. What about you? And so here's the commitment of Caleb, as we've already seen in scriptures. And we're going to read these verses over and over again because they pertain to every major point about Caleb's life, about his character, about his commitment. For he did wholly follow the Lord. He would not follow the crowd, but he wholly followed the Lord. Call your uh, to verse, attention to verse number 7 and 8 again. He said, Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And he said, I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. But this verse we didn't read this morning, but uh, we alluded to, but look at verse number 8. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Those were the other spies, those other ten spies in the original group that went out. They came back and the Bible said, and according to Caleb's testimony, he said they made the people's heart melt because they came back with a bad report. Joshua and I came back and gave what was on our heart. God promised the land. We've seen it. It's there. We've brought back evidence from the land. He said we can possess the land. And he said I've just given all of that. And he said but for me, I wholly followed the Lord my God. I gave you that little story about those three little girls this morning at the ending of the message. They were talking about their dads. And where I gave that little story, one said, my dad's a, a doctor and uh, he, he, he's a physician and he practices medicine. And the other one said, my, my dad's a, an attorney, a lawyer, and he practices law. And then where that third girl said, my daddy's a Christian but he doesn't practice anymore. Listen, friend, I want to be committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. How about you? And you say, well, preacher, how do I do that? You've got to make up your mind. You're going to have to determine in your own heart that you are going to be committed. I can't make you committed to God. I can't, I can't make my wife commit herself to the Lord. That is a personal thing where each and every one of us, as Christians and, and as believers, we're going to have to purpose within our heart that we'll give ourselves 120% to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 37 and verse 5, he said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I like what the book of Proverbs said, talking about commitment and committing thyself. He said, he said in, in, in Psalm that we just read, commit thy way unto the Lord. In, in Proverbs 16, verse 3, he said, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Ladies and gentlemen, before us tonight, we have this thought of commitment to, to the Lord. Here's the commitment of Caleb. As I gave you that little story also about what happened here a couple and a half years ago when we had that little, those children up here and how, how this child was concerned about their own dad and their commitment to Christ. I say to you, listen, we need a revival. I mentioned that this morning, revival. We need a revival. What is a revival? It's bringing it back to life. We need to be brought back to life, spiritually speaking. We need a revival of commitment. We need a, we need a revival of character uh, in, in the church houses today. We need, we need folks that's going to be committed totally in their whole life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this to you, and this is my own personal statement. If you're a dad and you're not wholly committed to the Lord, you've already lost respect and, uh, as a leader in the home. If you're, if you're not what you ought to be as a daddy, you've already lost respect as, as the leader of your home. The, the, the children are not going to respect you, and surely your wife's not going to respect you if you don't stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, what are you picking on dads for? Story about dads. Well, let me say this to you. If you're a mother here, and you're, 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 you're a lady in that home, and you're a mother who is not wholly committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, you've already lost your godly influence in your home. The dad, he loses that respect as the leader of the home. That, that mother loses that respect uh, as that godly influence in the home. Caleb was totally, wholly committed unto the Lord in every aspect of his life. Let's look at verses 10 and 11 again. Here's the confidence of this one called Caleb. Surely he was a man of character and a man of commitment, but he's a man also of confidence. In verse number 10, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. Notice this now, this phrase here, as he said. These 40 and 5 years, he said, even since the Lord spake 
this word unto Moses. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. He said, I'm about 85 years old. I said this morning, hey, listen, because we may be a little old, hey, it's not time for us to lay down our sword and shield. We need to keep going for the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, he said, as yet, I'm as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my strength was then, even so, is my strength now. He said, boy, I'm just as strong now as I was then. Oh, I wish I could say I was as strong as I was 10 years ago. He said, I'm ready to go. I'm more, uh, uh, as far as my strength is concerned, I, I, I'm more able now than I ever was back then. And he said, I'm ready to go. He said, whether it's uh, go out and uh, to go to war or whatever it may be, he said, I'm ready. So his confidence, you say, what was his, where was his confidence? It wasn't necessarily in his physical strength, but it was in the very words of God. Think about that. Uh, you, you notice in verse, go back to verse 6, the middle part of that verse, in verse number 6. I said we was going to read these verses over and over again. In verse number 6, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just read the middle part or the uh, court, toward the last part uh, of that verse. In verse number 6, what did he say? Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses. Do you see that? In verse number 10, the middle part of the verse, he said, The Lord hath kept me alive as he said, we just read that, as he said. What, what was he putting his faith and trust in? Uh, what was he, he said, my confidence is in the very word of God. He said in the, the latter part of verse 10, the Lord spake this word. Verse 12, he said, wherefore, the Lord spake in that day. And then the last part of verse 12, he said, as the Lord said. Caleb was a man said, whatever God said, I believe it. God said, I can have it. It's a possession. Why not take it? We got a book that's got 66 books in it. And it's the very word of God. <laughs> and we still wonder, oh, Lord, I just don't know if I can make it another day. You got verse after verse, chapter after chapter, character after character in the word of God. And he said, he said well, if God said it, that settles it, whether I believe it or not. He said, if God said it, I know, I, I know we can make it. And so just go off the very word of God. And he not only, he not only trusts the, the word of God, but he trusts the workings of the Lord. He had already seen what God had already done. How the enemy had been destroyed over and over again. And many of us, we've come through battle after battle after battle, and we come through victorious, and God has helped us, and then we come up against the wall. And we say, I don't know if I can make it another step. <laughs> Let's ask God to help us to have that confidence like Caleb had in the very word of God. He said, "If I, hey, listen, I'm the God that's got all power. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth, Matthew 28, verse 18. I've got it all. He's Jesus, friend. Hey, listen, are you, are you hearing me tonight? He's the Lord. Uh, he's the Lord of creation. Thank God. He's the Lord of salvation and all else in between. And thank God he'll get us to glorification one day. Hallelujah. He can help us. He said, I just trust the word of God, what he says. And Caleb had a mountain in mind. And as verse 12 said, he said, I, I want that mountain. I, I want that mountain. Give me this mountain. Uh, I, I thought about this this morning. I didn't make mention about this. There's a lot of folks, they'll, they'll hear the preacher preach and they won't hear a thing you're saying. <laughs> and some of them th this morning, some, some of us probably thought, said, I don't, know what, I don't know when he's going to get through, but I wonder what to have an over to restaurant about this time. I wonder how crowded it is, it, it is the restaurant. You know, we leave here and on Sundays we say, what are we going to eat? Well, I don't know, what do you want to eat? And we try to figure out maybe where we're going to go. If we don't fix something at home, we're going to try to figure out what restaurant we're going to go to. And when you get in a restaurant, hey, can you say, man, this, you don't know whether you're going to get out before church or after church. <laughs> Some experience that today. I mean, you go in there, you don't know how the service is going to be. You don't know how long it's going to take. And, uh, and my wife will ask me sometimes, she said, how long do you want to wait? I said, well... You know, not over 15, 20 minutes, maybe at least, if it's really good. And then sometimes you wait a long time and it's not good at all. But, uh, you know, we think about, you know, when we're sitting in church, sometimes our mind gets to wondering. Yeah. We're not, we're not fix, uh, fixated on the Word of God. We need to be uh, paying attention to what thus saith the Lord. Look at the Bible. See what God has to say to us. Here's a man who was sold out to God 110%. Uh, 
Number four, let's look at his courage. In verse 12, which is a text verse, and uh, we've seen his character, his commitment, his confidence, and here's the courage of Caleb. When you think about this in verse number 12, he said, Now therefore give me this mountain. He said, Wherever the Lord, here it is again. He trusted in what God said. He said, Whereof the Lord spake in that day. God said it, we can do it. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims, he said, were there. They were there, giants. And that the cities were great. They were fenced. They had fences around them. If so be the Lord will be with me, and God's always with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Then I shall be able to drive them out. What? Here's his confidence again. As the Lord said. Whatever God said, we can do it. He said, I got courage. I, I say this to you. You'll never have the courage you need as a Christian if your confidence is misplaced. You'll never have the courage as a Christian if your confidence is misplaced. If you got confidence in the preacher, you're in trouble. <laughs> you got confidence in the Sunday school teachers or the deacons or anybody, you're in trouble. Are you hearing me now? You got confidence in the government, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> I messed most of you up right then, didn't I? Amen. We're belly up, man. We're out of this thing. You got, I mean, gold, guns, whatever, you know. I, listen, it's God we trust in. He said, God, if God's going to be with me, he said it, we can do it. Hallelujah. We can conquer it. And I want that mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, Caleb liked the mountains. I like the seashore. Amen. Somebody help me now. You like, I want that oceanfront beach house. Amen. He said, I want that mountain. What are you saying? The spiritual aspect of this, friend, there's, there's some mountains that you need to get. God's got some mountaintops for you. God's got some joy. He's got peace for you. He's got something great for you. Hey, you, you may have to wait on it, but thank God he'll work it out. Hallelujah. Over 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. I can see, oh, oh Caleb, can you think about this now? Here he is in the deacons meeting. There's 12 of them there. These spies. He and Joshua said, man, we got, it's over there. All we got to do is get it. And the rest of them say, nah, there's giants over there. We'll read a little bit like, we're just like grasshoppers. I don't think we can make it. Can you imagine those 40 years Caleb was walking around in the wilderness? He said, I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, I'm going to stay with you, but I just can't wait to get me, a, uh, get me one of them grapes. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't wait to give me some of that honey, that meal, glory to God. The great things that uh, the promised land is, it's there. God's promised it. Man, I wish we were already there. Listen, don't sell yourself short in your Christian life. When God's got something for you, you say, well, preacher, maybe the Lord wants me to wait for 40 years. I don't think so. Hey, listen, they didn't have to. It was their choice. God could have took them there in less, uh, probably less than about 40 days. But here they are. Here's the courage of this dear man. He had the right confidence. His confidence was in Christ. Uh, his courage came through opposition. Of course, all the, all the opposition that he had to face and all the obstacles there. And I say this to you. Hey, listen. Are you listening to me? Hey, uh, opposition will always stand in front of opportunity. Opposition will always stand in front of opportunity. If you want to do something for God, you got somebody or someone or something out there that says you can't do it or you won't be able to accomplish it. Somebody said this here, that the door of opportunity swings on the hinges of opposition. Let's, let's look at a couple of things. I just want to give you this. I'll go back and revert to the uh, Old Testament numbers where they were uh, going up and spying out the land. There were some adversities uh, and also some adversaries, some opponents, some enemies, some rivals that they had to face. Uh, but, but, but Caleb said, just like Joshua said, I've got courage to overcome those adversaries. I've got courage to overcome uh, those adversities. The adversities was fear. Back in Numbers 13 and verse 33, and there they saw the giants, the sons of uh, Anak, he said the Bible said that they were giants there. They came up and said, we look like grasshoppers to those giants. Now they were there. They saw that just as much as they saw the grapes, just as much as the honey and the, and the milks there, that land that's flowing with all those wondrous things, they still saw some giants down there. And they said, boy, they're, they're big and we look like grasshoppers. That's fear. Caleb had the courage to overcome 
uh, his adversities, the adversity of fear. Don't fear what man can do unto you because we serve a God that can do all. And so that uh, adversity of fear and then the adversaries, the foes, those giants there, they're big. <laughs> all of us have got giants in our life. I don't know what holds you back. Uh, God's got great things for us and sometimes we let certain things hold us back, whether it be a fear or a foe. Uh, whether it be discouragement, disappointment, whatever it may be, our finances are all messed up. Uh, we got sickness, our family problems, distress, even doubt, whatever it may be. Hey, listen, we don't need to be overcome by that, but we need to be overcomers. Right. Caleb said, I got the courage. <laughs> Why? Because I'm trusting in God. He can help us overcome that. Philippians chapter 4, what does it say? Verse 13. What does it say? Verse 13 said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. God's got it under control. He can supply the treasury. He can scout the trail, friend, and, and he can see, see to it that you're triumphant in your life if you'll just follow him. And so Caleb had this type of courage. I like what Ephesians 3.20 says. He said, now unto him, that's Abel, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's a God of all powers. I quoted and said, Matthew 28, 18. He said, all power is given unto me. So when these giants, these foes, this fearful uh, adversity comes upon us, the devil tries to put us in fear and makes our hearts uh, uh, weak before the enemy, you can still be victorious in Jesus Christ. He had courage. There was not only courage over his adversities and adversaries, but go back to verse number 10. Again, verse number 10, And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. Now, God's given him good life. As he said, these 40 and 5 years since, uh, since the Lord spake this word to, to Moses. Now, he, he was probably about 40 years old when Moses was in command. And now he's, the Bible said the last part of this, verse number 10, he said, I am this day fourscore and 5 years old. 85, about 85 years old. And here he is. He's not only going to have to have courage over his adversities, which may be fear, his adversaries, which is his foe, but he's going to have to have courage over his age. And I've said it several times today, this morning and again now tonight. Some of us, listen to me, some of us just want to find a rocking chair. <laughs> I've heard some old folks say, I can't wait to get the glory preacher. Stand up in testimony meeting. I'm going to get me a rocking chair and get in the corner of heaven and rock, rock for, throughout eternity. <laughs> you're going to have a different body when you get to heaven, friend. <laughs> you know, you're going to have a heavenly body, glorified body, friend. You're not going to want to sit around uh, and rock for a hundred million years uh, on the backside of glory. You're going you're to be at the feet of Jesus worshiping God Almighty. Hallelujah. We can just give him praise. Amen. <laughs> just worshiping him. And so he had to have courage over his age. He said, man, I'm as strong now as I was then. Hey, man, I'm ready to go. I, I, I can tackle it. I, I, can, I can go with it, Lord. I'm there. As I said in verse number 11, talked about that. He had courage over age, failure. You see, as I said, we don't need to sit down. Uh, we need to make sure that we fulfill those promises. And true faith looks beyond the present circumstances. And he looked beyond that. Let me give you verses 13 and 14. Look at it with me now. Here's the crowning and conquering of Caleb. Now we've seen his character, his commitment, his confidence in the Lord, his courage over those fears, the foe, and even the, 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 the failure of his old age. He said, I'm, I'm ready. Verse 13 and 14 talks about the crowning moment of this. The Bible said Joshua blessed him. Now they're buddies, they're pals. Uh, they're, they're ministers together in the work of the Lord. The Bible said Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephani, Hebron, oh, for, for an inheritance. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to give you that place. You want the mountain? Verse number 12. You want that mountain? He said, you got it. And Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephani, the Kenizzite unto this day. Notice here in verse 14, the last part. Why? Because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. <laughs> Here's a man, as I said, that had character, commitment, confidence, courage, and now here he's crowned. 
with the conquering. And he's having this, this crowning moment where his faith has found favor. You just remain faithful, child of God. Don't let nothing stop you. I meant to say it this morning, and I, I failed to say it because uh, there's a lot of folks who probably were here this morning that needed it. You need it. I need it. All of us need it here. Don't let anybody steal your joy. God can give you joy. He can give you peace. Don't let anybody steal that. Don't let that other backslid church member steal your joy. Don't let that family member steal your joy. You say, Lord, I, I've, got, I've got my trust and confidence in you and your word, and Lord, I'm going to have that mountain. I'll have that joy in my heart. Caleb here, he didn't, uh, he didn't receive this inheritance because of his popularity. He didn't receive this inheritance because of his prominence or his power or even his productivity. You say, well, man, he was a great man. He probably did a lot, and he, he deserved it. And, and no. It was because he trusted in the Lord God and he followed him wholly. That's all he had to do. His faithfulness. I want to tell you what. Listen, faithfulness will be rewarded in heaven a lot more than any of this other stuff that we do in life. It may be great and good things. I believe he'll reward us for being faithful. And that's what I, I listen, I put that in my, somebody said, boy, I got something in my crawl. You know, I got something deep down, old folks. Listen to me, I want to tell you what, I put it in my heart a long time ago because I had a preacher that would stand on, he'd stand on the back of the pew and he'd point his finger in my face and he'd say, I don't care what you do in life, but you, you be consistent and you be faithful to God. And I want to die on the battlefield, serving God. I, listen, I don't have any strength without Jesus. I don't have any power without the Lord. It's all of him. But he lives inside of me and he lives inside of you. But I made, I made my mind up a long time ago. I'm not going to let nobody steal my joy. Hallelujah. I want that mountain. I want all God's got for me. Now, I falter and fail and I slip and fall. I got moments just like you have moments. But I want to tell you what, if you got it deep down in your soul that you're going to go on for Jesus, nobody's going to get you sidetracked. Amen. Folks may look at me funny. They may look at me weird. They may come up and say bad things to me, but that's all right. I'm just going to smile all over you, and I'm going to keep serving Jesus by the help and the grace of God. With his help, with his grace, I'll be able to do that. Caleb was that type. He had to go that 40 years, wandering in the wilderness, and now they've made some accomplishments, and he waited for the moment. He went up to Joshua and said, give me this mountain. I need that. I want it. Give me this mountain. He wasn't going to wait any longer. And so he climbed that mountain. He defeated the giants and he claimed his possession. For each and every one of us, we need to climb the mountain and we need to claim it. Amen. Are you hearing me? You need to claim it. Claim the victory. It's in Jesus, not in you. It's not in society. It's in Jesus. Let's claim the victory. <laughs> I was thinking about this and all of this, you, you think about the trials and trouble. You say, boy, I got trials and troubles. There's going to be trials and trouble. Think about Noah. What did Noah have? He had to flood, didn't he? <laughs> he had to flood. You think about the three Hebrew children. What did they have? The fiery furnace. You think about all those. How about Daniel? Uh, somebody said he was, in a, he was in a lion's den. No, he was in a den full of lions. <laughs> You can be in the lion's den and no lions be there, but he had, he had lions all around him. How about that widow in the Old Testament? She was empty. The barrel was empty. She didn't have a whole lot. Man of God said, make me, make me, a, make me a pan of uh, cornbread, big pone of cornbread. Give me something. And she said, well, how, 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 I just, you know, well, we're going to use this up. And she just kept dipping out and dipping out. And he said, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. She kept dipping out and dipping. Man, she's still dipping out. <laughs> Woo! You say, if she is alive today, you think, you think that barrel will still be uh, putting out, putting out the, uh, the flyer and the corn? Yeah, I believe that. You say, man, that's, this, that's stretching it. Uh, do you not believe God? He created this world. <laughs> that widow was happy. She didn't have to worry about dying then from food, starvation. She had what she needed. How about Jesus? He had the cross. But he died willingly for you. And for me, we're going to have trials, we're going to have tribulations, but 
If you really want victory, climb that mountain. Claim that promise. Some of us are going to do that. I'll stop there. Some of us are going to do that. We're going to, we're going to claim it. But as I said this morning, so sadly, so sadly, there's so many folks that sit uh, in good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching churches every time the doors are open. Uh, this is not the only church. You do know that. Thank God for it. I'm glad we're one of them. But there's churches all around the world that are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are some churches that are having to meet in certain areas because of fear of the government coming in and arresting and putting people to death. There's people, we used to call it the underground church, so to speak. They're having, they're having to secretly worship, but they'll pack out buildings, pack out uh, homes and stuff and, and worship the Lord. But there's a lot of people that sat in church this morning. They're sitting in church tonight and they're hearing words, but they're never going to heed the words. God's got it for you. If you want it, it's there. His faithfulness brought him favor. You see, the world and some of these televangelists, they're going to, uh, you're going to find the favor of the Lord if you'll send me money. Plant your seed faith. You want the real favor of God? Be faithful. Be faithful. Claim your mountain. Conquer your enemies. And give God the glory. Amen.